You're listening to the Mommy Labor Nurse Podcast, episode number 76. Hey guys, happy Monday. So guess where I am right now? In my new home office. I moved uh, this past weekend. Well, I guess it's been two weeks now if you're listening to this when it comes out. But I moved recently and we moved out of the Mommy Labor Nurse office um, that I've had for about a year and a half-ish. Um... And yeah, that's pretty big because I now work from home pretty much all the time and I feel like I actually can get a lot more stuff done at home. So I'm actually really, really excited about it. Um, But yeah, it's still a little sad because we've had a lot of great memories at that that office that I was renting um, and it was just such a great space. But yeah, that happened. I moved into a new house and I moved out of that office like all within... A couple weeks um, and shout out to my sister Jenna because she pretty much did everything <laughs> her and my mom did everything and my dad did everything to get out of that office um, while I was moving into my new house so yeah it was an eventful uh, couple weeks but we are starting to just settle in and getting into the new kind of normal at this new house and now working from home so so yeah it's been fun So yeah, on a personal note, that's what's going on in my personal life. Um, This episode I'm really excited about though, because we are interviewing Carol from Boston Baby Nurse. And this was a cool episode because Carol talked to us all about night nursing and some of the services that she offers from Boston Baby Nurse and just some other information about setting a good, healthy sleep foundation for baby once baby's a newborn, like from the get-go. We talked about overnight services if you have multiples. So if you have, you know, three, let's say you have triplets or you have quadruples and you need some extra help, even if you have twins, even if you have one baby, right? (laughs) It's always nice to have help. But especially if you have multiple babies, night services are just, or daytime services are just so, so helpful in those first few weeks. So she talked all about that and why, you know, someone might hire somebody to help out at night and just kind of debunked some of the stigma um, around, you know, hiring somebody like this because, I don't know, I'm a big fan of like the more help, the better, right? In those first few weeks, like, I mean, it takes a village, there's that phrase to raise a child or children or multiple children. And sometimes your village looks like, you know, someone that you hire. So I think that is completely okay. And yeah, she also talked about COVID and some of the things that we should be thinking about in regards to COVID with having people come into your house, because that's obviously an issue that we all (laughs) are very aware of right now. So yeah. And lastly, she talked about postpartum doulas too. I've done posts on postpartum doulas Um, in the past and the benefits of them. And she also has, she also has people who do postpartum doula services as well. So thought it was a great episode um, with a lot of great information. So let's get right into Carol's episode. You're listening to the Mommy Labor Nurse Podcast, where we firmly believe in the power of education when it comes to giving birth. Tune in each week as we dive into pregnancy-related topics, expert interviews, and a variety of birth stories. As a reminder, anything you hear on this podcast is not medical advice. Please see mommylabornurse.com slash disclaimer for more details. And now, here's your host, educator, registered nurse, and fellow mom, Liesl Teen. Umbilical cord care, tummy time, feeding diapers. Ah, your newborn baby isn't going to come with a manual, but I created newborn basics to be the closest thing possible. Mama, I want to help you transition into motherhood with confidence and ease. Prepare for the newborn days before you're due. Head over to mommylabornurse.com slash newborn basics to learn more. Hi, Carol. Welcome to the Mommy Labor Nurse Podcast. Thank you so much for being here today. Hi, Liesl. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, happy. So can you just start by telling our listeners a little bit about yourself and your background, where you're from, how you got started with everything? Sure. Yes, yes. Well, my name is Carol Kramer Arsenault. I'm a registered nurse 
an author and the founder of Boston Baby Nurse and Nanny. And I'm also a mom of three adult children. Um, it seems like that was just yesterday, but I don't know how that happened, but you know, uh, but as you, I've always had a passion for babies. Uh, so when working as a labor and delivery nurse was always my dream. Um, uh, and you know, I went on and became board certified lactation consultant, a parent educator. I loved it. Um, yeah. and when I was preparing patients, you know, for discharge and talking to parents, I'm sure you heard this. They would say, oh, if only I could take you home, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. I felt that firsthand, too. I remember coming home the first time and being like, I need everybody to come with me. Even though I, I kind of know what I'm doing, I still would like all this help at home. <laughs> yes. There was just, there's something really comforting about, you know, that, that the two or three days that you're in the hospital yes. with this new baby. Um, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, people would say that to me and that sort of started the vision of Boston Baby Nurse. Um, yeah. And, you know, I was a childbirth educator and also as a lactation consultant. So I'd see patients in the hospital, but I'd also see them like two weeks postpartum in the home or a month postpartum. And they were completely different stages. And so what I taught them in the hospital was very different than, you know, what did they need it at two weeks or three weeks. Um, and I yeah. saw that there was really a need for quality in-home newborn services. So in 2010, I founded uh, Boston Baby Nurse um, and we became Boston Baby Nurse and Nanny in 2018. Yeah, um, 2018, I also uh, published my uh, second book, Newborn 101. Um, and i um, happy to, re very lucky that it's won a couple of parenting awards. So um, oh. yeah, so that's sort of how I got into this. And like you said, it's one of these things that evolved because I loved what I was doing. Yeah. Yeah. And you just want to kind of share it with everybody. That's exactly how I feel too. <laughs> like, yeah. let me just share, share everything that I know as a labor and delivery nurse with everybody so they can have positive experiences. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, we make such a difference. Moms, their families are so appreciative of the help, you know, and because you, you know, you've gone through it, we've gone through it. Like we can be that person to help. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Well, let's talk about Boston baby nurse. I see that you offer overnight newborn services. Why I guess would someone even want to use this service? I feel like I know now going through it twice, exactly why I would want to use this <laughs> service, but maybe for someone who hasn't given birth yet, why, why I guess would that be, would that be something that they would, that someone would be interested in. Yeah, sure. Well, no matter how much I mean, it, a baby brings so much joy into our lives, but no matter what, the first few weeks at home can be stressful. Um, and the overnight <laughs> newborn experts help parents, especially new moms navigate those first, you know, early weeks with the newborn. And I guess yeah. the biggest benefit, um, I mean, there are many benefits that I just will, the biggest one is of course they, allow parents to catch up on sleep, which is yeah. such a necessity and, you know, not a luxury. And, um, it's, it's a service that, you know, we at Boston baby nurse, it might be one night, it might be, you know, four or five nights. It might be, we have one client we were with for two years. So, you know, it's, it, you know, it's so it's it's like sleep, of course, like is the main goal. Uh, but the you know we have a lot of moms that call us because they've had uh, postpartum depression or they're yeah. at risk for postpartum depression and they know how important sleep is. Um, we also interesting have a lot of uh, second time parents calling us. So you know, mom's having her second. She's a toddler at home and knows that she needs to you know at least have one or two nights where she's going to sleep, um, right? And then. Interesting around in Boston, like I'm in the Boston area, there are a lot of new parents that don't have family close by. Yeah, yeah. And grandparents and family members often pitch in and they'll pitch in for a series of overnight visits. And, you know, we're able to provide and be that person that a new mom needs, you know, that that support, someone to nourish the whole family, you know, and, and a lot of it is just provide reassurance. Um, 
And, and yeah. the, the, the other is that parents with multiples, it can be a lifesaver for parents with multiples or even medical condition. We have RNs on our team that will, uh, will go out and take care of babies so that the parents yeah. you know, can get some rest. Yeah, no, I mean, that makes total sense to me. Now, like I said, going through it twice, I'm like, man, I should have uh, thought about this. I I tried to put in as many support options, like, okay, let me make sure I up my, you know, my sessions with my therapist after after I give birth. Let me make sure that, you know, I do this, that and the other. I have people bringing me food. I have, you know, this this my you know my mom coming over this day and somebody to watch my older one but now they thinking back I'm like yeah that would have been a nice thing to have the first week or two or yes, three or right? first month to have somebody at night yeah because I mean I am a firm believer and you talked you touched on it first um in that sleep like you said is a necessity you need sleep to make milk I mean you need sleep to function during I, I mean it's we understand that with a new baby, you're not going to get eight hours of sleep every single night. That's right. just not possible. Um, but every little bit counts. And if you're sleeping well, if you're sleeping, at, you know, at least for a four or five hour chunk, you're going to be able to function better with, you know, your mental health is going to be better. Everything's going to, your relationship with your partner is going to function better. Sleep is like the found, I was just talking to another podcast, podcast guest about this, that like sleep is like such a foundation that is like so, so important that like protect it at all costs in the beginning, (laughs) do everything you can to like bank that sleep. (laughs) Right. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. Well, so this, these overnight services that you offer, and I guess, you know, other daytime services as well. Do you, I know you said you're, you're an IBCLC or I'm assuming that this is like breast feeding, feeding friendly. Like you wouldn't, you know, this, the person helping out would bring baby, you know, in the middle of the night or mom would pump, or I guess how, how do you train, I guess, your people to know that it's breastfeeding friendly and how does that translate over. Right. And that is, I'm so glad you brought that up because that's probably one of the number one questions that we get yeah. from new moms who yeah. would like to use our services, but because they're breastfeeding, they yeah. think, well, I'm going to be up anyway. So why do I need someone there? Right? right. And so our goal, like our, if breastfeeding is the goal, then we will do everything we can to provide support to the mother. And one of the things uh, that makes Boston Baby Nurse a little bit different is that I created a training platform based on uh, IBCLC standards and, you know, the AAP so Mm -hmm. that anyone who goes out uh, on Boston Baby Nurse has gone through this training. And I mean, they're not board certified lactation consultants, but they know Mm -hmm. a lot, you know, the basics. Um, And so, for example... As you know, and I know, right, if you've done this before, if you have a baby that you've breastfed, breastfeeding can be 20, 30 minutes a session, you know, for example. But the truth is, even though the session is only 20 to 30 minutes, by the time mom has to get the baby up, change the diaper, uh, maybe get a glass of water, sit down, breastfeed, maybe change again, swaddle the baby, burp the baby, Put yeah. the baby, settle the baby, and then get the when baby the ba- back to sleep. That's a whole right, right, right. <laughs> and then what happens? So, so now what was like a twenty-minute feed or thirty-minute feed it has been like an hour and like yeah. maybe five or ten minutes. And then mom tiptoes out of the room or like puts the baby wherever the baby's sleeping if they're sleeping in the same room, and she's like goes back to bed. And right as she's about to fall asleep, the baby will make a noise and she's up again. And this is. Like, this is what it's like. And I think with, our, you know, when we have our second and third, we're like, okay, you're, you're not hungry. I'm going to, you're just going to like, I'm going to let you just fuss a little bit and you'll go to sleep. But like when the first baby, we don't really know. And so the nice thing about having the overnights is that the uh, newborn care expert will come in and the only thing mom has to do is like, give us access to your, <laughs> to the your breast. Food. That's yeah. it. And <laughs> like, you can be half asleep we dim the lights and that's all you have to do. And then like, we just make sure she goes back to bed and then the newborn person does everything else. And 
the, the other thing is that, you know, babies don't need to be fed every hour during the night. You know, in the hospitals, we have them kind of on a two, three hour schedule. Yeah. So um, the newborn care experts will try to implement a, just a really basic, um, just some healthy sleep habits. And so if the baby fusses an hour later, and but she just had a big feed, then the, we know that we're not going to wake mom up yet. We're going to let her have a solid, you know, two to three hours. But if the if uh, you know, the baby needs food. Obviously, we'll wake the mom up. But we talk to the mom before um, the night begins. And we some moms, like uh, they set an alarm. Other moms like to be a uh, text message sent. So we kind of figure out what it is that works with the family. But, you know, we promote breastfeeding. But just the fact that mom knows, I can go right back to sleep for two hours or three hours. That is huge. Like you said, you know, earlier, a two or three hour, four hour chunk of sleep is great versus I with I had my first I was I would be like falling asleep and then she'd wake up yeah. and I'd be up again and I I almost like got into a funk where I didn't sleep because I was afraid to fall asleep because I knew yeah. I'd be getting up you know it's just this kind of cycle uh, yeah. and having yeah. someone in there who knows what they're doing and getting the rest you know and babies pretty soon you know they they two or three days or, or a week of having a little bit of a routine at night and not feeding every hour, you know, they start to also sleep a little better as well. So, you know, there's a lot of benefits, but that's probably the biggest. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, and what I was going to say with that too, I brought it up a little bit earlier in regards to making milk. A, there, There's kind of a two trains of thought of where, okay, we want to breastfeed, you know, more during the night you know, make sure you're not going more than three hours, uh, you know, two or three hours in the beginning, because that's going to affect your milk supply. But I've heard from a lot of lactation consultants, particularly that, no, it's actually, you need a three or four hour chunk of sleep to make more milk because you need rest and you need, you need rest to function to be able to make milk. Like, yes, you want to stimulate your breasts every hour, two hours, three hours, but it's also important to sleep. I mean, gosh, like I'm thinking about my first one. I was not sleeping four hours in the beginning and I had issues with my milk supply. I gave him four, I supplemented in the beginning too, but I would argue, I mean, I, I have a great post on my Instagram that's like, do I, are you team pump? Are you team pump, 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 or team breastfeed, 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 or are you team sleep? And yeah, it's, I've heard both things from, from lactation consultants that it's like, no, you either, it's more important to breastfeed, breastfeed, breastfeed versus like, oh no, it's more important to get that four hour chunk of sleep. So. Yeah, but, it's true. It, it it depends also on the mom. And if we have yeah. a mom that we're working with and she has a low milk supply, the baby's not yeah. gaining weight. It's a completely different story. Totally different. Totally right? Different. Yeah. 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 Well, we talked a little bit about multiples. You mentioned that your um, a lot of people who have multiples use your service. So I'm assuming the answer to this question, if I have multiples, would you, would you recommend overnight services, is a resounding yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's a yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So tell me a little bit about what that kind of looks like. Do you have more than one person coming in? Like, do you have one, more than one person handling, like, what if you have three triplets or quadruples or, you know, this, that, and the other, how does, how does multiples, I guess, look like? Sure. Uh, and we have a lot of multiples, you know, we have a lot of multiples yeah. and we have some triplet sure. families. And um, so we, the, the, the team is trained to take care of multiples or triplets. Uh, we don't see that many triplets. And in fact, when we do, we sometimes do send out two, um, two people if we put a team together. Uh, but for yeah. the most part, the, the, the professionals on the team that take care of multiples have had them themselves uh, or they have experience with the multiples. And we have a whole uh, like little protocol on um, a packet that we provide to the families and, and like a little, tutorial on how to get them on a little bit of a schedule, how to, um, how to manage taking care of two babies and still manage to function and take a shower and for mom to, you know, eat some lunch. Um, and at night it's great because they will, the mom typically gets up 
for a little bit of the time and, you know, helps with the feed or whatnot. And then she goes and she'll go back to bed, but the new, and I've done overnights myself and I had, you know, one baby in one hand, the other baby, you know, putting, uh, you know, the baby into a, a, a bouncy seat and, just mm-hmm. experience like with, you know, when we work at the hospital, sometimes we have a couple of babies that we're working with um, and providing mom um, some just a little guidance as to how to manage two babies. And most of the time we can get them to eat one after the other. And then mm-hmm. we swallow them one after the other. And then we put them down into their, their cribs one after the other and get them into a little routine. And, you know, it's unbelievable. Some, you know, within a week or two, um, the babies are just a little bit more in sync with each other. And during Mm -hmm. the day, mom will follow that pattern as well. And, and a lot of times parents will call us, moms will say, well, what do I do today? It's like, we support the family. Even if we're not there at night, we get calls and our team, we have almost over 50 people. Uh, We have, we're, we help everyone. You know, it's, I think once a nurse, always a nurse. And Mm -hmm. um, our, our team is the same way. Like they have such a genuine um, uh, love and, and care for the family, uh, that the parents will text some of our, our specialists and say, Oh, you know, this one's doing that. How do I do this? So it's, it's, it's just having someone to call and knowing that the information you're getting is accurate, you know, trust, yeah. um, that's a huge thing. Um, but it's hot, you know, a, a newborn, having twins, no matter what is, is, is a lot of work with or without a newborn care specialist. Oh, one hundred percent. I'm. The, I mean, I've not done it myself, but I've had one, and one is a lot. So I'm like imagining having more than one. And right. I'll totally right. Could be. Yeah. Well, let's talk about some sleep training, which can be some somewhat controversial. But I see on your site that you guys are affiliated with the American Associate American Association of Sleep Medicine, which is great. Do you, your employees? practice sleep training with newborns um, or kind of what does that look like? You've kind of touched on it a little bit. It sounds like that you, that you set like healthy foundations in place. Yeah. So with the, you know, with newborns, well, let me just back up the, in terms of the AAP and um, recommendations, um, it's our business model was built on providing AAP based information, research based, evidence based, um, it is not something that I give recommendations on how I, you know, what worked for me or what worked for her. So it's really important, yeah. I think, for families to get this, this this sleep training. And it's a business. And if you go online, there are you know, a plethora of sleep coaches. And, you know, it's just huge right now. And um, a lot of these, you have to be careful because anyone can call themselves a sleep coach, a sleep trainer, whatever, you know, baby whisperer, because there aren't any, you know, certifying bodies there aren't there's there's no one organization that oversees this so it was important for me that if we were going to provide this service that we felt 100 percent comfortable doing it and so we did uh we have a team of um uh newborn care experts that have gone to sleep um uh clinics and worked in boston they're at the sleep clinic and at children's hospital and i myself have gone to several um, um, want certifications on sleep and just to learn about it. And we've worked with a couple of, um, psychologists and pediatricians and come up with a sleep platform. And basically it is, it's, it's well, I don't want to say it's, it's, it's fervor, but it, every baby's a little bit different, but we have sort of one way that we, we want one sort of guide guideline and one practice. And it's just, you know, giving the baby the opportunity to fall asleep. It's yeah. overall, you know, and like, I think my number one suggestion, if someone said, what would you tell a new mom? If you could only tell her one thing, my, my biggest advice would be put your baby down awake, drowsy, yeah. but not totally asleep. Um, yeah. And that's sort of what our, our sleep coaching philosophy is just so that parents understand the, 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 the reasoning, the science behind sleep and why it's important that babies learn how to fall asleep and what it means if they cry a little bit and, you know, and like addressing issues like bonding and parents are scared that, you know, the baby cries, the baby, it'll have a detrimental effect. So our approach is really to explain to the parents the science behind what we're doing and then to come up with a, a 
plan that works for the family. And there is a little bit of protesting involved. And the bigger the baby, like the bigger the protesting, but it is all done very compassionately. Um, and, you know, with empathy, we've all been there with our own children. Um, and so, you know, this, with newborns, there's no training at all. Like we firmly right. believe a baby is going to do what a baby needs to do. But like your point earlier, when you mentioned how the babies go like a four or five hour stretch over oh, mom to like maybe have a four hour stretch without feeding newborns also built in have a four or five hour, um, usually like more four hour stretch um, mm -hmm. of sleep that they have the capacity to, to fall into a deep sleep for four, maybe sometimes five hours at the newborn stage. Unfortunately, it's usually 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Yeah. So what we do is sort of re try to reverse that. And we sort of explain that to parents. Um, so that's sort of the newborn piece of it. When we get calls from moms that have like a four month old, we, we just use a little bit of a different approach. And, and then we get calls from parents who have a two year old who doesn't sleep. So it really depends on the, um, the, the age of the baby. And we also collaborate with several other sleep, um, qualified sleep um, uh, clinicians in the Boston area. So if it's something that's out of our realm, we would never like try to do anything we're not comfortable. We would refer them to uh, a, a clinician that's comfortable. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's crazy. We have some five-year-olds that aren't sleeping, <laughs> but like giving your baby oh, the sure. gift of your, uh, allowing your baby to fall asleep and, and that gift of fussing a little bit, falling asleep is just, it's just a beautiful thing because they're set up for good sleep habits for the rest of their lives. Yeah, no, to I couldn't agree with you more. I'm a firm believer in like, do whatever you have to do to get your baby to sleep. I mean, it's because yep. it just makes the whole house function a lot better. It makes mom happier. It yep. makes baby happier. It just, yeah, I'm, I'm like I said, firm believer in mom getting enough sleep, firm believer in baby getting enough sleep. And yeah, like you said, sometimes there's a little bit of fussing involved, which is okay. It's, and I, I always encourage, um, or I always like, whenever people ask me about this subject, there's, I always like, let them know that like, there's a difference between your baby fussing and your baby like crying, crying, like in losing their mind crying. And you as a mom are gonna, you're gonna recognize that, you know, there, there's such a bash against cry it out and, you know, sleep and just quote unquote sleep training. But there's, I don't know, I mean, there's certainly a different, like I know when my baby, because I'm his mom, is just fussing and he's like just kind of laying there, you know, sleepy, but just like, Meh. I'm not going to go in there and get him up. I know he's just crying because he's tired and he's about to fall asleep versus like he's thrashing around. He's like going nuts. I'm, you know, he obviously needs something. Um, so it's, it's, I, I agree with everything you just said. About yeah. Sleeping. And it's, <laughs> it, it's true. And it, you know, it, Liesl, it's, it's almost like what, for a mom to hear our, when we hear our own children yeah. cry, our oh. response, you know, it's like whether it's a little piece of toast burning in the toaster or the house is burning mm -hmm. down, like our response is the same. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, I have to go get him. And oh my gosh, you know, every single time I'm like, it's right? like nails on the chalkboard. <laughs> it is, <laughs> it is. And men don't, men also, you know, they feel, of course, they, they want to get their baby, yeah. but it's a different. Yes. It's very different with, with maternal instinct and the paternal instinct. Uh, yes. But, but yeah, I, I, it, I agree. It's, it's when they're yeah. fussing and like, good for you, like letting your baby fuss a little bit and look what happens. Yeah. They go, they, they go right back to sleep. They get the hang Unless of there's it. something wrong. Yeah. It's like, you just kind of have to learn them. It's like some babies um, will, I mean, usually what I've experienced with my little one is like, okay, he'll start crying. I'll pause. You know, you do the little pause. You wait for him to kind of show himself if he's going to go back to sleep or not. And usually what happens if is he just kind of ramps up if he's not going to go back to sleep. If right. he's not ramping up, then he goes back to sleep. That's just, that's usually what happens. Now, granted, you know, of course he goes through periods like last night, he got a few times because he's just, he's got a tooth coming in and he's real 
you know, going to tell me about it. So just like anything, you know, they, they go through periods like that too, where they still get up. I mean, he's not, you know, sleeping through the night because of that, but yeah, no, definitely a firm believer in the, in the fussing. Fussing is okay. Fussing is totally okay. If we're, if it's helping me get more sleep and my baby get more sleep and for us to both be happier during the day, then totally okay in my book. Also in, in, not just my experience, but research and in our experience. And we have, um, I looked it up a couple of days ago. Um, we have worked with 8,000 families in our 12 years. Mm-hmm. And I don't, a lot of them were, were, you know, were sleep coaching and whatnot, but putting a little bit of um, consistency into the baby's day um, at the beginning. And again, you know, parenting there's no right or wrong. There's like so many different ways and they're all okay. Like it depends what the mother's goals are. Yeah. Um, the people that call us typically are looking for a little bit of guidance on how to just structure their day and, yeah. and get a little more sleep. And so that's why we always, you know, suggest put your baby on a simple schedule so that he's not yeah. racing all day long, like a little yeah. suck, a little nap, a little more food, a little nap. And like, cause that is a hard cycle to break and they eat so much like during the day cause they're grazing that at, you know, like they just sometimes overfeed. They don't, they, their stomachs are so like putting like every two to three hours, every, you know, three hours when they get a little bit older. And of course being mindful that it's not going to be exact science, but yeah, having a little bit of a consistency is huge. Babies don't know that they need a schedule and they tell us by crying. And so when we, you know, implement this schedule, it takes two or three days. I mean, it's like miracles happen. Babies, and I had a woman that works, um, she's on my team and she has, this was at the time, I think he was four months old and he wasn't napping during the day. Um, And so we talked about naps and she put him on a little bit of schedule. And like two weeks later, she called and she's like, thrilled because this is her first baby and he's napping we talked about you know get that morning nap get this nap and to like a little bit of structure in the day it made the biggest difference and like I'm looking back when I first had my first child I did not know what I was doing at all and I, yeah. I'm like this would have made my life so much easier you know but in hindsight uh, but yeah so I think that having a little bit of consistency is is huge um there are so many tips. I mean, I get so excited about talking about that. So I won't, I won't keep going, but you know, just yeah. not, not getting so for parents, not to get so stressed, I think is another huge tip because the babies totally feed off that stress, you know? So yeah. that's the other thing, you know, like everything will pass. Try not to it's really sometimes hard to see moms who are so anxious yeah. over like very, very, you know, mild sort of things. And our work is not even with the baby. It's more to relax the mom because once she relaxes, the baby will relax. Oh no, I've experienced, totally experienced that with my first one. I was so anxious all the time yeah. with him because you're just trying to like control every little aspect. And I mean, at least for me, I felt like coming away from it. I obviously my son, is my older one is four now. So what we're dealing with is he's starting to get his little attitude and he's starting (laughs) to push buttons and he's start. you know, we it's, there are hard times right now, but am I feeding him, you know, every hour, like I was when he was a newborn? No. Am I having to, you know, deal with not understanding what he needs because he couldn't talk to me? No. He tells me exactly when he's hungry. He tells me exactly if his, foot is hurting and I need to take him to the doctor. You know, it's like, I didn't, ha- I don't have to deal with that kind of stress with him anymore. It's like, I, I feel like at least for me that it's the hardest in the beginning and every day, every week gets a little bit easier, but some things, you know, you're going to have to deal with a sleep regression coming or, you know, like I said, my son is four and he has a little attitude that we're dealing with right now. Yeah. Like that's just parenting, right? Like, right. I feel like you just get more, you, it's, it's harder in the beginning because it's so new, but eventually it gets easier because you get more efficient and you learn them better and they're able to communicate with you better. So yeah, it's, but I, I mean, the newborn stage is very, 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 very hard. At least that's how I feel. 
Wondering what you need to do to stay on track during each week of pregnancy? Not sure what you need to be learning or researching along the way? I can help. Sign up for our free weekly pregnancy series to get tips, advice, and resources tailored to your exact week of pregnancy sent straight to your inbox every week. Sign up at mommylabornurse.com slash I am pregnant to get your first email today. See you in your inbox real soon. Um, all right, well, let's talk about daytime support. We've talked about nighttime stuff, but you guys do daytime postpartum support. What kind of, what does that kind of look like? Is that, I, I'm familiar with postpartum doulas. Um, is that kind of similar to what a post, postpartum doula that, would do? Or what does that look like? Yep. So daytime support is similar to the support that a doula would provide and that the, uh, the newborn expert will you know, help the mom with a few things in the house. Post the the, the doulas will take care of of the mom. Um, you might see a doula um, giving the mom a, a back massage or a foot massage or making a banana bread or helping with laundry or doing errands, yeah. right? And and also you know some some baby care as well. Um, our team focuses um, on the whole family, but more on the baby. And um, what we found is that there were a lot, a lot of families when we first started that um, have the baby and mom, you know, when the baby's six weeks old or four weeks old, wants to go out to the store for the first time and she's never done it and she's overwhelmed. She doesn't know how. So she'll have her newborn. We have a newborn expert go out with her. And so the person might spend four hours in the home or six hours of the home. And part of that day will be, okay, look, we'll go to the grocery store. This is how you you put the baby in. And these are some tricks. And then if you have two big kids, like a toddler and a, a newborn, like how do you get to the grocery store? And having someone who's done it before make it look really easy and doing it with you is like huge night and day. And then a lot of parents, I think, you know, with a newborn is very different. Having a newborn is to care for is different than caring for a one-year-old or even like a nine-month-old. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of moms are hesitant. I know I was, I I didn't want to leave my newborn with a a babysitter or, Mm -hmm. you know, I didn't, have my mom close by and I'd want to run to the, the post office and like who I didn't know who to get. And sometimes I just need some time out during the day and my husband traveled. So, yeah. um, so our, our daytime support does just that they're, they care for newborns and we have built a, um, our, our business on, on like genuine trust. And we have a, a huge community of, of, of um, we're involved with the post, you know, postpartum and OBs and pediatricians. And so um, we get lots of calls from moms who want to get out of the house for the first time and they need to leave their newborn with someone and perfect resource is, you know, a, a newborn care expert um, or mom families that don't have relatives close by um, or, or like grandparents that live across the country, right. And they're alone and they need someone to be in the home with them. This is the perfect kind of set up is to have a newborn care expert, even if it's for like four hours two well, four hour shift is pretty much what they do or eight hours. Yeah. Um, and then interesting, um, what else has been really popular is so when the family ends up getting a nanny uh, at some point, which we started providing nannies a couple of years ago, but before we did that, our team would actually train the nannies and parents loved that, right? So we would go and we'll ch- explain to the nanny, this is this is the best way, you know, to do tummy time. This is, you know, it's because the nannies, like, you, who know? We don't. Moms don't know where they got their training from, and and so, yeah. it, you know, they it's it was so worthwhile because we spent you know the first let's say month or so with the family, and then when they did have a nanny, we'd provide the training. Um, so daytime support can, you know, be a lot of different things. It could even be, sometimes we'll do a post, we'll do a class instead of, you know, when the baby's born and you wait a couple of weeks, then we'll go out and we'll do a baby bath and just all different types of baby activities with the mom and the dad in the home so that they can feel comfortable, you know, handling their baby, you know, and it, it, it does, it is not making it sound like it's a hard thing to care for a baby, but you know, it's interesting. I've seen, I've been doing this for over 20 years and I see like, as we get more technologically savvy and have more resources and more internet 
uh, information at our disposal, parents are more fearful and worried that they're not going to do something right. Or that, you know, this, I've had parents like get their six month old little computers because they think, oh, we got to do this. So, you know, it, it, it is nice to have someone come in and, and say, oh, you don't need the computer. You don't need this. Like all you really need is, you know, the like baby likes to look at you or one book, you know, forget all those plastic toys. And so it's, it's nice to be able to, to, to help families um, transition into parents and mm-hmm. provide that reassurance. And um, I love daytime visits. I like, I, I'm not good at night. I like, I did that as an overnight nurse at labor and delivery yeah. and Oh, can't do that again. But you know, it's I it's just like so fun to go into a you know a home and like help parents. And like I said, I think earlier, people they're like so thankful for the support, you know. And it's it's just really gratifying to help um, t- to be a part of someone's life during this time. It really it's such a, a privilege, and um, it's such a special time. Yeah. Well, we talk about it takes a village, so it sounds like you yes. are part of the village, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, thank you so much. Where can we find you guys on social media and on the internet if somebody wants to check you out? Yeah, so um, we, you, Boston, www.bostonbabynurse.com. Um, you can reach me there, Carol, at bostonbabynurse.com. Um, our team, uh, you'll see our team there. We have an, a, we have a lot of great resources Um, and Instagram is Boston baby nurse and nanny, uh, and our blog post as well. Um, you can find, um, all on our website. We've got lots of great resources. Um, we try to make this information available to everyone. You know, it's like, we try to really be able to make it, um, uh, reach as many people as we can. And, uh, and yeah. So, and, oh, I know what I wanted to mention. I'm sorry, I was blanking. My book, Newborn 101, uh, available on Amazon um, and, um, you know, other online resources as well. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Carol. It was good to chat. It was a pleasure, Liesl. Thank you. Take care. All right, so that is it for this episode of the Mommy Labor Nurse Podcast. You probably follow me on Instagram because that's probably where you came from. But if you don't, head over to Instagram and follow me at mommy.labornurse for more. That is certainly where I am most active. I also now have a separate Instagram for just this podcast. So I encourage you to follow my second account at mommylabornurse.podcast as well if you want podcast updates. Again, that is at mommylabornurse.podcast. As always, you guys know that I also have a website where I have tons of articles all about pregnancy, birth, breastfeeding, newborn stuff, and more at www.mommylabornurse.com. I want to hear more from you on how much you love this episode of the podcast or how you think I can improve. So leave me a comment on one of my pictures, send me a DM, or send me an email with all the love. All right, guys, I will see you same time, same place next week.